All right, so welcome to the Morning Chalk Up Show. My name is Justin LaFranco. I'm joined here by Tommy Marquez and a special guest, Tal Short, who is the product manager for the Reebok Nano. Just the other day, we got our first glimpse at what is going to be the next iteration of the Nano Shoe, which comes out pretty soon. Tal, you're going to have an opportunity to tell us a little bit more about the sneak peek on that. But first of all, I want to offer my congratulations on the, the new launch, especially in the middle of uh, a challenging time frame and period. Uh, my first sort of question is, Guys, like, how did you take, you know, this product so far away and and kind of get this to a state of launch with kind of some of the unique challenges that come in a, in a time frame like this? Yeah, I mean, we we felt the same challenges that you know, no matter what industry you're working in these days. I mean, it, it's it was going to be a tough environment, but you know, luckily the the X one that we were building was almost finished as we got into March. So when we really got locked down, so. Um, that doesn't mean that we didn't do quite a few, you know, driveway meetings or, you know, those final touches where we literally were meeting in people's driveways. I think most of the time it was mine and we'd come over, uh, we have our, our group of guys would come over and girls and we'd be like, Hey, let's take a look at this, this product. And, um, you know, definitely, uh, very COVID kind of meeting outside mask on, but just getting it done. Right. Like there's no excuses. We got to move forward. And we wanted to get the shoe out there, right? We didn't want to wait. We wanted to get it out there, give something positive for people. We know people are starting the new year, you know, looking to maybe change some things with their routine. So this would be a great time to launch a shoe. And with regards to the shoe itself, I think I, I think I'm trying to capture the reaction of the community is anytime there's a new shoe or a shoe launched or a new shoe line, if it's an offshoot or not, the first question is, all right, how does this compare to past shoes or in which ways is this unique and can you speak a little bit to the x1 and some of the i guess the approach that you guys took towards crafting the shoe and what you wanted to accomplish yeah i mean we have a similar process with the nano like we always take a look at you know what the the feedback is on the previous model and sometimes even the previous couple models and and so i think for the x1 we, we probably did w way more research than we ever did and we did it up front we talked to consumers and it wasn't just like us focused like we went around the world which is something we haven't done in a really, really long time. So we went and got feedback. We actually showed prototypes for the first time. We had people work out in the shoes. Um, so it, it was a cool process. It was definitely very lengthy. Like we, we spent a ton of time on it. Um, it was something that we felt was important because as you, I'll show you guys, the X1 is definitely a step, a pretty big step forward from where we've been. Um, I think it, it took a few people off guard that we would actually take this kind of step, but it was all strategic and it was all, you know, fact-based and, and really what the consumer is looking for these days. So following up on that, like, look, you've been in this position for a long time. You've iterated a ton of different shoes. You've taken shoes from product concept or concept to product to shipment. And so when you're like, I was looking at this and I was thinking, I don't have the shoe yet, but I was looking at the new shoe going, okay, look, like this is a little different. I have the, I have the 10 right here in front of me and then, or the Nano X. And I'm like, okay, so sometimes, you know, in feedback, you're like, okay, it's a little bit stiffer, or maybe it's a little bit more bouncy, or maybe it's a little bit more uh, wider in the toe box or whatever. As you're like taking and receiving that feedback, like, how do you, how do you find the balance on something like that without like, you know, overtuning the vehicle, right? Like you make it faster and it doesn't turn right sort of concept. If you were talking about a car, like, how do you, how do you manage all of that? Well, I mean, the good news is we've got a lot of history in this space, right? So we've got a lot of learnings, like, right, we've got over a decade of, of things that we can always flip back to if we need to, right? So I think we take tons of feedback. And I think, I think people might be surprised, like we read the comments, like we have people that go through and collect all the comments. And if there are certain themes that people are talking about, we definitely pay attention to. So for example, the Nano X is one that, hey, everyone loved the design, loved the look, and the one probably opportunity that we saw from from a Nano X was that it was a little bit heavy for some people. So we're like, okay, let's take a look. Is it heavy? It was It was definitely one of our heavier Nanos. So, okay, people are looking for maybe a little bit lightweight. How can we take out some weight and not sacrifice performance? And so it's those little fine details, right? There's that scale, um, you know, it's gotta be great for lifting, but we need to run more. So like, how does that work? And it's always a fun challenge. And I, I've said this before, but building a, a you know, a high functional, you know, training shoe is probably one of the, the hardest things to build because it's got to do so much in one shoe. And, and you mentioned something uh, specifically the history. And one thing I'm always fascinated by, especially when you're developing shoes that are all kind of in the same family to an extent. Um, and that's that's taking your history and inspiration and moving forward with that. 
Um, you know, you look at past iterations like the Speed TR that was, you know, all within that nano family. And now we have something else that's that's debuting. Um, are there are there maybe little elements of each one of that you've pulled from in particular? And what are they? And then how have you since uh, kind of stress tested them in developing them with, you know, maybe some some athletes and some people that are going to be putting it to the test at the highest level? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great question. Yeah. I mean, we're always using not only from our um, space, like our training space, but in our running space. And, and one of the things you'll see is we, Hey, we had this amazing technology. It's called flow ride energy. It's a foam. As you can imagine, it's our, it's our high end, you know, running foam. We're like, how can we get that in the nano in the right spots? Right. And so uh, I'll, when I talk to you guys through the product, you'll, you'll see where we placed it, but those kind of things, we're not just only focused on our past, but also what's going around, going on around us. Um, and the great thing is we have such a long list of athletes to be able to test this out. Um, you know, luckily they're all about the same size, so we can order, you know, it doesn't cost too much to get them samples because um, obviously it's tough when it's early on. Um, but we love getting feedback from the athletes. And I, unfortunately this year we don't get to do it, but we used to always go down to the Bahamas right around this time, kind of right yeah. after Guadalupe. And, and we get everyone together and we have like, it's one of the most fun and terrorizing days for me because the athletes can just like give me direct feedback and, and I love our athletes because they're super honest. I mean, you, if Annie Thorsires tells me she doesn't like something, I know why, and she's gonna tell me exactly what it is. Like she's not afraid to, you know, speak her mind. But that's built. That's we we love that because it's gonna make our product better. It's nothing against her. She knows shoes, and, and I think it's great having those kind of athletes around us that really, you know, help build it together. Like it's almost a, a shoe that we have built together. So it's awesome. Well, you actually answered what my next question was, just how you involve athletes. Um, mm -hmm. And it sounds like you involve them uh, uh, through like very much in a step-by-step -step process throughout the, the launch of a new product like uh, like Nano. So I'm going to move on. My next question is, let's talk a little bit about the shoe. Let's talk a little bit about the yep. performance aspect, performance elements of it. How have you adjusted and tweaked it from the X now to the X1? And kind of what are some of the points of performance that, that athletes that are going to be buying this trainer here in the next couple of weeks can come to expect? Yeah, no, I'm super excited to get it out there. So I'll actually have a sample here so you guys can check it out. But um, I think the first thing that you're going to notice right away is just kind of the overall shape of the shoe, right? So mm -hmm. we, we, we felt like, I, I like to say this in a, a funny way, but it's like, she, it's like the Nano X started counting her macros or, you know, or she's doing, you know, intermittent fasting or whatever she's into. Like she just, she just got off that like 10 to 15 extra pounds or whatever it is. So she kind of changed her lifestyle. So she's a little thinner. And obviously, as I talked about earlier, she's a little bit lighter as well. Um, we also, I think the big kind of change, and I'll, I'll try to zoom in here, um, is the material on the upper, right? So we, we know that kind of knitted uppers or people love the comfort of them and the feel of it, but we had to figure out a way to make it durable. So we used our flex weave material that we've had in you know every nano since the Nano 7 all the way through the X. We've evolved it to a knit version, which is really cool. Um, it gives the look and feel of the knit, but with the protection of flex weave. So I think that's one thing that I think we're going to have to wait and let the, you know, the consumers really wait and see, because they're going to see and be like, oh, it might get dirty. It might get roughed up. Yeah. But I, I think they're going to be super surprised because we've done a ton of testing on it. As you can imagine, it was a pretty big, bold statement to bring out this knit version. Um, and so we're excited for it. We think it, it expands our, our, our consumer base um, definitely beyond just, you know, your hardcore kind of CrossFitters. You, you're getting into the, more of the functional fitness, you know, kind of hit space as well. And, and so kind of touching on some of the, uh, the, the other kind of bells and whistles, there's also there's just the Nano X1 and the Nano X1 Grit as well. Yeah. And what Can you kind of speak to the differences between those two? Because uh, yeah. CrossFitters love, love their shoes. Yeah. <laughs> More, more likely to end up with both of them at some point, but just in case we can only choose one and their significant other is uh, put a cap on it for at least to start. There you go. Very, very valid. So I, I think I think it's it's good to just at least talk through the background. So we love the dip. We thought it was awesome. Like we, that's where we saw and it, it most all, I would say 75% of the, the colorways will be in this knit version. But we know, especially probably a lot of people watching this are, are tried and true to kind of traditional nano kind of looking shoes. And I, I think you can see with the, the kind of flex weave upper, it's a very familiar look to the CrossFitter, right? It looks a little bit closer to the 10. It's actually an updated version. Yeah, there you go. There's the eight. Here we go on the 10. So, uh, and honestly, everyone's like, oh, does it, is it more durable? It's, it's about the same. Honestly, the knit surprisingly looks less durable just because it's a knit looking uh, material. But this one, obviously, it's, it's more for the aesthetics, right? So that grittier look, um, that someone, you know, wants to buy and doesn't need to even worry about any sort of, you know, durability issues, which we've tested both of them. And it's actually amazing how close they are for, 
for being so different. Nice. Um, okay, so so uh, kind of an odd question, but one that we've gotten uh, a lot of times is how long, like how long does it take to get a shoe done? Yeah, no, it's, it's a fun process. I think this particular shoe we started two and a half years ago um, because we were taking such, yeah, it's because we were taking such a drastic step. We had to, okay. like, we always have to validate, right? That's a long time. Not, yeah, tell me about it. We have to, I have to go back and read my notes on everything when I have these type of interviews because I can't tell you what we're already working on in the future. You can imagine if you do the Like, we're at my mind, like today, all the meetings were about something else. And then obviously, I have to come meet with you guys. Like, I mean, all right, switch it back to the X. Well, no, you can, you can talk about that yeah, too. Man. I mean, we're not, we're not, we're not going to limit you just to this, you know. <laughs> I, I like my job too much to, to, ruin, okay. to ruin it. So. But no, yeah, it's a process, right? Like we go through a ton of trials. I, I think the X1, because it was such a, a pretty big step for us that we felt like we had to validate it. We validated with CrossFitters across the world. We validated with the functional fitness space. So we wanted to make sure that we had a breadth of different consumers trying out the shoe, giving us feedback. We made a ton of changes. And I think one thing from a performance standpoint that I want to make sure it's, it's pretty clear is uh, the, the probably the biggest change outside of the material is that we actually made the drop so that's the, the the back of the shoe to the front, right? Most all nanos have been four millimeters. We've actually bumped this up to seven. And a lot of that goes into the comfort and wearability and just the runability, right? So, you know, a traditional, just so you guys know, a traditional running shoes, like performance wise around nine or 10 millimeter drop. So we went with seven kind of right underneath that where you can still lift heavy. So obviously that's the number one concern. Everyone's like, oh, am I gonna be up on my toes? No, does it feel a little bit higher when you first put it on? Sure, it's not as flat. We think that's a good thing, and, and we've done the research to kind of prove it out. But I, I will say that was probably one of the more bold kind of moves that we made. Um, we, you know, we have to lead from the front. We know, you know, some of our competitors just came out, and they're do, still doing four millimeters. Like we, we get it, but that's that's not where we we see the the community moving to. So that seven millimeter drop. I, I know we use the word runability a lot when we say like even nanos or other shoes. Like this legit. Like I, I personally can I run a five k in the shoe and I'm fine. Like I, it's it's a legit kind of running shoe that you can train in, um, which is which is pretty cool, right? It's still you can still lift heavy. There's no issues there, um, but we just felt like with where everyone's moving as far as fitness fitness goes, this this really lands perfect for them. You kind of touched on something that that kind of that fascinates me with that because you, when you factor in the the time it takes to plan and develop something a, a shoe like that while also kind of meeting the demands of a sport, especially in the, in the sport of fitness, which is a very fast evolving and, you know, trends ebb and flow with the time as quickly as the focus on training might be. I, I'm just always curious, where's the, where's the needle that you have to thread and what's, what are some of the difficulties and, and challenges for you guys to try and a meet the demands of the community at the time of release while also having the foresight two and a half years ahead right yeah and, and, and shift the boat you know it's it's you're planning for it's almost like you're planning for an iceberg that you can't see yet and i'm always curious about the the creative process behind that well and i think that's why we start early right we have a concept we start you know trying prototypes we get it out in front of people we get comments we make changes so like it's not like we you know two and a half years ago this shoe looked like this like it looked a lot different when we first started right and it evolves with the info that we get right so we we were up to the wire when we were finishing this shoe like the nano x had come out we were like literally making sure that when we were reading comments and feedback like we were making sure that this shoe was going to hit that or we would have to kind of make some late changes which is never fun um but yeah, no, it's definitely something that we we definitely you know focus on. Um, but you know, it's 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 a fun challenge. Let me tell you. <laughs> so, uh, also really kind of curious about, and you touched on it just a second ago. It's just kind of like last minute changes. Well, you know, I I it kind of pivot that a little bit to like scary moments, like you know, not necessarily with the X one, and maybe maybe it has been as recent as, as as a shoe like that. But have you had any like big scary moments in the development of a shoe? that you know kind of rocked the boat a little bit or or you know cause a little bit more sweat on the brow yeah no i think it's a it's a, a good story to share because i think the nano 9 is a very popular nano so i can use that example um we got a call from slt in around late december of the prior year from it when it was going to launch right so probably about six months five or six months before it's going to um kind of come out and so our, our senior leadership team was like hey we want to bring, we're bringing back the vector in a big way. So the big vector, we're bringing it back and we want the Nano to lead that. Um, so we need to get a big vector on the side of the shoe. And we're like, whoa, that shoe is not built 
for that. Like we had to figure out a way to get it on there, look nice, get it tested, right? So our, you know, we have to make sure that it didn't come off during rope climbs. And so that was one, I believe we were on a conference call with the factory on Christmas Eve, and I'm not joking, like trying to get that done. It worked out great. Obviously people love the nine, I'm sure. Justin might grab one. Yep. So adding that vector. That was, <laughs> Unplanned. That was not, that was not Just so happened there. to be here. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. But yeah, that was not on there five five or six months. But it was a, a bold move by us. But like we, I think it paid off because it was really cool because no one knew that Reebok was going back to the kind of the vector brainings. And everyone's like, oh, that's cool. Oh, it ties into the Nano 2 and 1 and all those. And we're like, yeah, it's actually going to be a bigger story as we move forward. So, And as you've seen, our brand has kind of tr transitioned into that. So that was a fun, kind of scary. I wouldn't say fun, but it was definitely a trying time for us. Tom, you go ahead and take the last question. Well, well, uh, before before we kind of let everyone know what, where can they expect it and and when? I'm I'm always curious, and this is like the sneakerhead in me, right? The first thing you see a new shoe pop up, you're like, all right, what colors does it come in? And is there any special releases or drops coming? So I'm curious, what are some, maybe some planned, uh, some planned releases or drops or colorways that you guys have coming for when it when it does become available for the public? Yeah, so I think if you've seen online, you know we have some of the colors out right now, right? So your traditional kind of this one's probably my favorite. It's white, white, black gum. We have the traditional kind of black gum and we've got the women's white gum. So those are the traditional ones. We've got a few colors as well. Um, I, I think what I'm most excited about this year is that obviously if anyone's been around Nano, we have, you know, drops throughout the year, but I, I think especially you, Tommy, we have some really cool collaborations coming um, with Nano somewhere we've never been before. And I, I'll just say, I think seeing the Wonder Woman kind of Nano X maybe kind of shows you kind of where we're headed from you know collaborations and i think as we get into the fall season nanos, nano season, <laughs> <there you go. laughs> nanos nanos sorry right. sorry there you go that's, that's, no but even even bad. when we get in even when we get into the fall season we i think you might even see some some iterations meaning we'll have some fun with the nano as we move forward so it's going to be a big year for us we, we had planned on it um you know we're excited to get the x1 out there i mean i Thank you to all of our consumers out there. I love I, and a lot of watch probably your guys' stuff that I call them the nano nerds. They're my fellow nano nerds. So I appreciate it. We thank you for your continued support. Um, we love you guys and, and keep getting feedback because we use it. Um, so I just appreciate everything that they do for us. All right, all right. Last question is what are the key dates that people need to keep in mind and where can they go find the shoe when it, when it comes yeah. out? Yeah, so right now, like we're running a quick kind of launch of our I'll Call You backpack. So it's a triple black kind of Nano X1. You can get that right now. Um, mm -hmm. It will probably sell out because we have limited pairs. That was kind of just a kind of surprise. Hey, let's you know tease it out to the community. Let a few people that really want it have it. Um, but two, three, so so uh, February third across the world goes live. Um, but if you go to Reebok.com, you can actually sign up for early access, and I believe it's one twenty-eight. So a few days before. You can get the shoe and we give you free expedited shipping. So I would definitely sign up. All it is, you know, it's a simple email, sign up, get early access. Then you can get, you know, you're getting your size, you're getting the color you want. Um, Cause we feel very confident it's going to sell. So um, excited to get it out there. Uh, I think all of us are. Awesome. Well, Tal, thanks so much for joining us. Congrats again on another successful launch. We're looking forward to trying our pairs here pretty soon, giving them a whirl, giving them a good wad. And um, again, thanks. Congratulations, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon. All right. Thank you, guys. Take care. Finish. I love um, it.